Uh, okay, so my name is Yang, and uh, in this presentation, I'm going to talk about how to learn a very flexible family of statistical probability models, uh, which is the deep energy-based models. And we are going to talk about how to use random projections to scale up score matching, which is a very classical approach for learning unnormalized models. Okay, so let's start by considering the task of learning an unnormalized probability model. An unnormalized probability model is defined by a real valid function f data. In order to define a probability distribution, we first take the exponential of negative f data to make it positive and then normalize it with the partition function z theta. So for general f theta, it's usually intractable to compute z theta. Uh, therefore, we usually treat z theta as an unknown quantity. Suppose we have the data distribution, which is p data, and we want our model to uh, be close to the data distribution, then the typical method of doing this is using maximum likelihood, um, which is uh, maximizing the expected likelihood of the model uh, under the data distribution. Here, the expectation with respect to p data can be computed uh, easily using RID samples from the data distribution. However, the log likelihood function depends on the intractable uh, log partition function. Therefore, we have to use some alternative method to learn unnormalized probability models. So how can we bypass the intractable partition function? Let's consider this gradient of log p theta with respect to x. This quantity has a very nice property, which is uh, uh, it does not depend on the partition function. This is because the gradient of log z theta with respect to x is zero. Because z theta is a partition function, it only depends on the parameter theta. We define this quantity as the score of our probability model. Now, suppose we have the vector field of our data scores and the vector field of our scores for the model distribution. It's clear to see that the model distribution is close to the data distribution if those two vector fields of scores are close to each other. Therefore, we can compare the vector fields of scores of the data distribution and the model distribution and use this as the objective of learning unnormalized models without worrying about the partition function. Mathematically, the objective is like this. It's uh, expected Euclidean distance between the score of data distribution and the model distribution. Obviously, this objective does not depend on the partition function because the scores do not depend on the partition function. This objective is also called the Fisher divergence objective. However, the Fisher divergence objective is not directly computable because it involves the score of the data distribution. This is usually unknown. Fortunately, we can use integration by parts to get rid of this term. To gain some intuition, let's first consider the case of a one-dimensional Fisher divergence. We can first write the expectation at the integral over p data if we suppose p data is a continuous density. Then we can expand the squares uh, into these three terms. The blue term is a constant because it does not depend on the parameters of the model. The green term is tractable because it does not involve the score of the data distribution. And now the only term that involves the model parameter and the uh, uh, data score is the red term. We can further simplify the red term by first explicitly writing the derivative of log p data like this. And then we can apply integration by parts to this equation. Then we get two additional terms. Now the gray term is zero because we can assume p data goes to zero when x goes to infinity or negative infinity. So now we are only left with the brown term. Now we can substitute this brown term for the red term in the original expression. And finally, we can replace the integrals with expectation. And now we get an alternative form to the one-dimensional Fisher divergence, which does not depend on the partition function and also does not involve the unknown data score. Analogously, we can apply integration by parts to multi-dimensional Fisher divergence as well, 
and have the following equivalent form of feature divergence which does not involve the data score. In this objective, the first term is a trace of a Haitian of log p theta which does not depend on the partition function and um, is computable. The second term is the true norm of the score which also does not depend on the partition function and is computable. And this objective is well known as the score matching objective. So far, we know that the score matching objective can be used to train unnormalized models. Now our goal becomes more ambitious and we hope to learn deep energy-based models. This is a special kind of uh, unnormalized models where F theta is parameterized by a deep neural network. So in order to use the score matching objective, we first have to compute the true norm of the score and also the trace of the Haitian of log p theta. And both can be computed by bank propagation. We first discuss how to compute the true norm of the score term. We can first make a forward propagation to compute the value of f theta. And then we do bank propagation to compute the gradient of f theta. And we know that the score is a negative gradient of uh, uh, f theta. So we can compute the first term within only one bank propagation, which is very fast. However, in order to compute the trace of the Haitian of the p theta, uh, it will take much more number of bank propagations. As before, we first do forward propagation to get f theta. And then we do bank propagation to get the gradient uh, with respect to the first dimension of the input, x1. And then we need to bank propagate through the whole procedure to get the second order derivative of f theta with respect to x1. So this is the first element of the diagonal of the Haitian. And then we can continue in this fashion. And uh, we get the other elements of the diagonal. And now we can sum all the uh, diagonal elements together to get a trace of the Haitian. As you can see here, this whole procedure will take a total number of bank propagation that is proportional to the uh, data dimension, which we denote D here. Therefore, score matching is not scalable to uh, training deep energy based models, especially in high dimension data space, because computing trace of the Haitian is not scalable in high dimension. So how can we solve this problem? We propose sliced score matching. The motivating idea is that one-dimensional problems should be much easier to solve for score matching. And therefore, uh, we can project the vectors of scores onto some random directions so that the vector field of scores become scalar fields. And then we can uh, compare the scalar field of the data and model distribution. For example, we have the vector field of a data distribution and the vector field of the model distribution. And we have randomly picked two directions. Next, we can project the vectors onto those two directions. And it's clear to see that uh, those two vector fields are close to, to each other if their projection to all random projection vectors are close to each other. We can summarize this intuition as a new objective which we call the sliced feature divergence. So we use V to denote the random projection vector and use PV to denote the distribution of this random projection vector. The objective can be written as the expected squared error between the score of model and data projected along the direction of V. So this objective has two expectations. It is a, a expected value with respect to the data distribution. It's also an expected value with respect to the distribution of random projection vectors. However, we have the same problem of unknown data score here. But we can play the same trick of integration by parts to eliminate this term. And we call this new equivalent form of the slice feature divergence, uh, the name slice score matching objective. And note that the second term of this objective is fast to compute because it only involves a uh, score of the log, uh, the score of the model, which can be computed within one bank propagation. Now the first term again involves the Haitian. However, it's in the form of Haitian vector product. So now the question becomes, is it scalable to compute Haitian vector products in high dimensional space? Fortunately, the answer is yes. 
to see this, we first write the Hessian vector product term uh, by explicitly writing the Hessian operator as the composition of two gradient operators. And then we move one vector v inside the parentheses. So we get an alternative form of the uh, Hessian vector product term. And now we show that the, this alternative form can be computed within a constant number of bank propagation. We first do forward propagation to get f theta, and then we do bank propagation to get the gradient of f theta. Next, we compute the inner product of a v and this gradient. This is equivalent to adding a new neural to the computation graph. And this completed the computation within the parentheses. And now we do bank propagation through the whole computation procedure. We get the gradient of this inner product. And finally, we can compute the inner product of V and this gradient. And this completes our computation of the Hessian vector product term. So from this procedure, we can see that it only requires a constant number of bank propagation, which does not depend on the data dimension. So this means Hessian vector product is scalable to compute in high dimensional space and also implies that slash score matching is more scalable to compute in high dimensional space. Recall that score matching requires you to compute the trace of the Haitian, which uh, scales um, proportional, proportionally to the data dimension. Okay, now let's talk about how to employ slash score matching to learn deep energy based models. Let's recall this is the slash score matching objective. We first uh, need to derive a finite sample estimator that is based on samples from P data and PV. So this objective has two expectations. We can first estimate the inner expectation by drawing ID samples from the data distribution. And for the outer, outer expectation, uh, we can draw multiple random projection directions for each data point. And there's much flexibility in choosing the distribution of random projection. For example, it can be a multivariate normal distribution it can also be a multivariate random macro distribution. In the paper, we show that theoretically the latter one has a smaller variance uh, compared to the former one. And we can also do uh, different methods to, do, to reduce the variance of the finite sample estimator. For example, we can use more projections. We can also uh, analytically integrate out some terms of the finite sample estimator. And there are also some nice results um, about theoretical properties of a slash score matching. Uh, in the paper, we show that the estimator derived from slash score matching is consistent. Um, in this figure, we show how consistency means. So uh, the, f the, circle, the circle is the family of model parameter, and the theta hat on the script one denotes the estimated parameter using only one data point. Theta hat on the script two denotes the estimated parameter using two data points, and so on. Um, this figure shows that uh, when the number of data points used to estimate the parameter goes to infinity, then the estimated parameter will converge to theta star, which is the true parameter that corresponds to the data distribution. Also in the paper, we show that the distribution of the estimated parameter is asymptotically a normal distribution. And finally, uh, we go to the experiment part. First, we want to show that slash score matching is much more scalable than score matching. In this figure, the x-axis shows the data dimension, and the y-axis shows the seconds per iteration for computed ob objectives. And it's better when the number is smaller. So in this figure, the brown curve shows the performance of a score matching. And it's clear that the cost of running score matching uh, will go very fast with respect to the data dimension. And it, it even runs out of memory for a data dimension as small as 400. And um, the blue and orange curves shows the performance of a slash score matching and a slash score matching with variance reduction. And those two curves, they almost overlap with each other. Um, and they both scale much faster than the score matching method. And in this experiment, we first uh, um, show the result of uh, using slash convention to fit DKEF. It is a special kind of a deep energy-based model. The y-axis on this figure shows the score matching loss on the test data set, and it's better when the number is smaller. So this figure shows that uh, slash score matching with variance reduction, it 
achieves a similar performance to score matching. Uh, but we know that slice score matching is much more scalable than score matching, and we can record this from the previous figure. And we also obvious similar results on two additional data sets, Parkinson's and Red One. Also, we also would like to mention that uh, slice score matching can not only be applied to learning anomalized models, it can also be applied to train variational autoencoders where the encoder distribution is implicit. Here we train the slice score matching, um, we train the VAE with an implicit encoder on the cellular I data set, and uh, we provide samples from different methods. And uh, from th this figure, it's clear to see that uh, slice score matching generally produces samples of higher quality. And actually, the FRD scores of uh, SSM samples is also uh, smaller than the other objectives. And finally, we also want to mention that uh, slice score matching can also be used to estimate the scores of the data distribution and uh, directly produce samples with larger than dynamics. So in one of our ongoing work, we showed that this approach can be used to produce high fidelity images comparable to the samples of GANs. And especially on the CIFAR-10 uh, data set, we achieved a new state-of-the-art state inception score. So in conclusion, slash score matching can scale up score matching to learn deep energy-based models on high-dimensional data set. It can also uh, yield theoretically consistent and asymptotically normal estimators. It has many applications. It can be used to do density estimation by learning anomalized models. It can be used for score estimation, which will be useful for learning VAEs with implicit encoders and uh, Wasserstein autoencoders. It can also be used for score-based generative modeling uh, to produce high fidelity image samples. So for more details, please read our paper. We also provide a blog post that explains more about this. Thanks.